Good to see everyone this morning. Um, glad you guys could make it out. Um, just real quick, uh, Neil and his family, they are off on holiday this weekend, so that's where they are. And also want to just bring attention real quick to uh, Mark and his family. I mean, they have just, they just need our prayers right now. They've just been through a lot lately. They just had their new baby, and then they've just been dealing with one after another, dealing with sickness and stuff. So we just really want to lift them up and pray for them. So if you guys would just remember them uh, in your prayers this week, I know they would greatly appreciate it. Just check it in and say, man, do you guys need like nappy runs or anything else? And he goes, well, I'm good enough right now. I'm able to go out and do what I need to do. But, you know, just dealing with a newborn and then Emily's not feeling well, all that kind of stuff. So just keep them in your prayers because I know it's been a while and uh, they're eager to get back. So, But with that said, good to see everyone here. Um, and I am just encouraged and I hope you are too. Um, this is kind of a third part of a little series that we've been going through um, on Revelation. And if you so if you've been with us um, during, during the whole time, hopefully this will make sense. If you haven't been with us, it should still make sense uh, about what we're talking about and where we're going. Uh, so I'm not going to do a lot of background on that, but just want to continue to uh, talk about what Revelation is. You know, we've been talking um, in, in the recent weeks just about how this is a new year that we're entering into uh, in the like biblical calendar. This is like like a new year right now. And we this would have been a celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles, okay, and a, a week of joy. So my prayer was that you guys would all be experiencing the joy of the Lord in some way or manner. And I want you to remember this. Sometimes joy isn't always just a happy emotion. Just during worship, I was thinking about that, and it was for the joy that Jesus foresaw in being with us that he was able to endure the cross. Sometimes joy is what we have to look out into the future in order to get us through towards where we're going. And so, like, even when Nehemiah was, was it's, that's where, you know, he was rebuilding, and that's another theme, what we're going to talk a lot about this morning, when he was building the walls up again and building a place where God's people could come and interact with him, he had to, it was the encouragement of the joy of the Lord is my strength. So it was in the midst of a lot of things coming against them and in the process of building that they said, we have to lean in and press in to joy to get us through into the future season where God's going to manifest his glory in a powerful, powerful way. And I believe that's what God's doing right now. And so we've been talking about that. Uh, Tana's been sharing really, really with us about that this is a year of building the house. And as I talk about that, because today I'm really, the, the sermon title, if you will, I kind of joked around about that last week. I don't normally have one, but they're coming. So there's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Phil, there you go. I have to tag that in on the YouTube thing. So, uh, but today's would be building out of Revelation. I think the first week was operating out of Revelation. Last week was, actually, I forget what last week was. Do you remember, Phil? I don't even remember. I don't, it was something. But this is building out of Revelation. Okay, because God is doing something in this hour that wh where we just sang about we want to be where he's at. So if God is building right now, guess what? We want to be with him building with what he's doing. And we really believe he is building his house right now. Now, when I say building his house, I, I want to bring this down so it's very, very practical for you. First and foremost, you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the house that God is most interested in in building okay so as we talk about the fact that god's building his house this year it starts right here okay it starts right here it starts with what is he wanting to do in us so that things are aligned so that we are um where god is as we've just saying about we're doing the things that god is doing and we're not out here trying to figure things out on our own okay so it's first and foremost here secondly it's it's in our families God is wanting to build something new in our families. He's bringing alignment to our families, okay? And that's a declaration. He's bringing alignment to our families, okay? And that, then the third part would be corporately. Like the Lord is building a house corporately like never before. And it's really easy for us just to focus on that from up here because this is something brand new that God's doing here and it's beautiful and we're excited about it. And we've been pressing into that more and more and talking about it over the last two weeks. But when we say God's building a house, he's doing something specifically here, but also worldwide in his house, okay, in the church. 
right? And so as we go about this today and we talk about building out of Revelation, I want you to be able to, with the Holy Spirit, be able to think about that in those terms. First here, God, what are you wanting to build in me and why is Revelation important? What are you doing in my family and why is Revelation important and so on and so forth? Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. Um, I just want to pray as we jump into this. So Father, um, I, I thank you for what you were releasing already this morning um, through worship, through praise. I thank you, God, that, that you reminded us this morning that you are the healer and that you are healing. And God, I pray for that revelation to be unveiled in our lives, God, that you are the healer. And God, when I say that and I ask for that, Lord, I just pray that not only will we understand you as healer, but that you will manifest healing in our midst. And God, we recognize that you have healed bodies in this room. You have healed uh, trauma and mental things in this room. Amen. And we recognize that and we praise you and thank you for it. But God, we know that you are building a house and a place where your power is demonstrated more and more. Because when your power is demonstrated, it reveals your very nature and your very name. And you are Yahweh Rapha. You are the great healer. So Lord, we just want to ask this morning, uh, not only for that name, but for all of your names, God, that we would come into an alignment and God, where the, 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 um, the reality is hidden from us by the enemy of this world, where we don't know you by your full nature. That God, that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you in your entirety. And so that God, that you would manifest your presence and your glory in such a way, Lord, where the actual nations of the world will be drawn to you. So God, we just humble ourselves before you this morning. And God, I just humble myself before you. And Lord, let us let the meditations of my heart and and the preparation, God, just be able to be released. And Holy Spirit, you have free reign. You have free reign to, to take this wherever you want it. So minister to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. So building out of Revelation. Um, I touched real quick last week and I talked about the ecclesia. We've, we've, and I'm going to be hitting on some passages that we've been using in this whole series. But do you remember that? Matthew 16, where Peter said, Jesus, I know who you are. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and Jesus said to him, Ah, that was not knowledge that you had in flesh and blood, but our, my Father revealed that to you. And then we talked about how we said, On the basis of that revelation, Jesus said this, And on this rock I will build my church. And the church again is ecclesia. Do you guys remember some of that from last week? If you didn't, the idea of ecclesia that Jesus was saying there, This is my ruling, governing, legislative body on earth. Now, I do believe that one of the things, that a journey that the Lord's going to take us on corporately is understanding that essence of what he says in our corporate realities. God wants to build us as a, as a governmental, if you will, parliament here. But we, we reflect God's government. We reflect his government. We reflect the government of Jesus because it's on his shoulders, the scripture tells us. And it's always increasing. The kingdom and the government that is on Jesus' shoulders is always increasing. So if we want to be where he's at, we want to be in an increasing revelation of understanding how to be not just a good place to come on a Sunday morning and feel warm and fuzzy and see beautiful faces, which is all part of it. That's part okios, which is the Greek talks about. That's a part of us coming together and experiencing family. And we'll continue to do that. But I, want, I think he's wanting to build us into a place where we actually operate with the power and the authority that he's given us in Christ in order to, if you will, use this word again, bring alignment to earth as it is in heaven. Okay? So that's what Jesus meant when he said, I will build my church. That's what he's building. So if we, as, as like us all together and the leaders of this community aren't in line with what Jesus is building in his ecclesia or building as the ecclesia, then we're not going to, remember this, the gates of hell will prevail. Because if we are not where Jesus is at and building where he is building, then the gates of hell will prevail. And the reason I say that is because he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and then the gates of 
hell will not prevail. So again, if the gates of hell are prevailing in your life, if, if you're constantly in this battle against the enemy and he seems to always be winning, then a question that we have to ask ourselves is, are we in, li- in alignment with knowing Jesus as the son of the living God? Are we pursuing him? Are we worshiping him? Are we in an intimate relationship and fellowship with him? And are we where he is? You have to remember this because Jesus, which I, we say it all the time, but I, I think it's so important. When Jesus was building God's kingdom on earth, He was always in the right place at the right time, wasn't he? He was always in the right place at the right time. And we now, with the same spirit that he walked in, have that same ability and calling and purpose to be where he is, right? So I say all of that to say, so building on Revelation would be building on Jesus, right? As the chief cornerstone. But today, for the next few minutes, I want to talk about building out or up out of Revelation. So to start there, I want to go to 1 Kings chapter 3. So if you guys have your Bibles and you want to turn there and follow along, you can. Um, I've referenced this a few times, but haven't really dealt with it too much. So 1 Kings chapter 3, it is about Solomon, who is David's son. And David had in his heart to build a house for God. Good timing, right? He wanted to build a house for God, but it wasn't in God's timing or in God's alignment and plan and purpose for David to build that house, okay? It was for his son to build that house, and David was in agreement with that, so he walked in that, you know? And we have to remember that as we walk with Jesus. Sometimes our own desires can try to take us into places that isn't where the Lord is, even if they're good, godly desires. Sometimes those things will try to take us and, and again, formulate something that comes out of our own power and our own mind. Just like David, he could have forced his hand and said, but God, you are looking for a place to dwell. I know your heart. And so I'm going to build you a house. Even when God said to him, no, I don't want you to do it. I want my son to do it. Does that, does that make sense? And so, so, so David just says, okay, well, then Solomon comes up. He's made king, and we start reading what happens in chapter 3. It says this, Then Solomon formed a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house in the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. So I'm not going to worry about Pharaoh's daughter right now, but we see that this is a time that, that Solomon is getting ready to build. Okay? The people were still sacrificing on high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. Now Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David, except he sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. That's a lot. That's a lot of animals that died that day. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night, and God said to him, Ask what you wish me to give to you. Man, isn't that awesome? The Lord asking us to ask him. You know, we, sometimes we can just stop for a moment and just think about that and go, Man, I wish God would ask me just to ask him whatever I want. But he has. What did Jesus say? Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For Solomon, it came through a revelatory dream. So again, the beginning process came to him through revelation. But guess what? There's a word for us today that there's a revelatory word that came out of Jesus' mouth that is this. Ask. If there's anything else, that, if there's nothing else that you remember this morning, know this. If you want to come into alignment with where God is, ask him. God, where are you? Show me. Align me. Okay? But this is God asking him, ask me whatever you wish. Then Solomon said, verse 6, You have shown great loving kindness to your servant David, my father, according as he walked before you in truth and righteousness. And I'm sorry, in truth and righteousness and uprightness of heart toward you. 
and you have reserved for him this great loving kindness that you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And just a real quick pause on that part. What is Solomon doing before he asks anything? He's honoring his father. He's honoring the, the past move of God. He's honoring what has just taken place. And he's not only honoring what God has done, but he's honoring his father, David, right? It's important as we build, as we transition into what God is doing here first, but then here secondly and in our home secondly, that we honor what God has already done. It's a big deal. I know we talk about that a lot here, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that, but think about that. It's good to remember what God has done before. Sometimes that's just re us reflective, reflecting upon his faithfulness in our own lives how he's cared for us, how he's taken care of us, how he's led us from one season to another season, right? But in that, we're honoring God and we're honoring what he's done before. Verse seven, now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. Yet I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. So there's honoring. The next part is humbling. Okay, again, I'm not going to spend any time on this, but they're just important notes. Here was the king of Israel, the king of God's people, understanding his rightful place, getting ready to move into what God has for him. God asked him, what do you want? And he hasn't even gotten there yet. He's saying, God, look, I know you've, you've made me king now. And I think it's interesting. He says, your servant king. He's still recognizing this is God's, this is God's movement. This is God's church. This is God's temple. You know, when we say yes to Jesus, we say, God, we're giving you full permission to be Lord, to be boss, to be the CEO of my life, right? So you have full permission to do whatever you want. I am just a servant. You see, we're bringing, Solomon's bringing himself into alignment before the God of all gods. And when we bring ourselves before him, we just humble ourselves to a place of going, God, whatever you want, I am yours. If you call me to lead, I'll be your servant leader because you're the ultimate leader, right? And so on and so forth. He says, but I am but a little child. I do not know how to go in or how to go out or come in. Basically, he's saying, I don't know how to do this job that you've called me to do. And if some of you are thinking going, I'm in a place in my life where I'm thinking about my family right now and I have no idea how to get my family from where we are right now to God's preferred picture of the future, right, this vision, or I don't know how to get my own life into alignment with where Jesus is heading, and I'm stuck in the past right here, guess what? You're not alone. As we've said it before, Moses did not know how to lead a nation out of bondage. Solomon, who was considered the, one of the greatest kings of Israel of all time, did not know how to be king. So guess what? If God is calling you into something right now, or calling you to do something, calling you to have a conversation with someone on the street, or to have a conversation with someone in your family. Guess what? If you don't know how to do it, it's okay. As long as you realize that you don't try to do it with your own power, your might, and you'll humble yourself before the Lord. I don't know how to do this. Verse 8, your servant is in the midst of your people, which you have chosen, a great people who are too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant, here it is, an understanding heart, to judge your people, to discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? So he finally gets to it. What's he asked for? He asks for an understanding heart. If you look at understanding heart in the Hebrew language there, you'll find out this. It basically mean, mean understanding basically means a listening or hearing, okay? So to understand is to listen or to hear. And heart, okay, is essentially the soul, or a lot of translations say the inner man, the seat of your emotions. Basically what he's saying is saying, God, I need to hear directly from you in here in order to know how to do what you've called me to do. And I specifically wanna say it this way. God has called us to be the ecclesia. I said that at the beginning. He has called us to be a ruling, governing body. How do we rule on this earth? How do we crush what the enemy is trying to do in our families and in this community and in our own lives? How do we reign? Because Jesus in Revelation, he says that we are kings and priests. 
You know, we are called into royalty. When we are saved, when we let Jesus rule our lives, we become royalty on this earth. We are ruling, again, the ecclesia, the governing body. So how do we do that? We say, God, we need to hear from heaven things that we do not know, revelation. We need to be able to hear them in our inner man. That's revelation. So how do we build out of revelation? goes back to a couple of those little things I, I began to say earlier. We honor, we humble ourselves, and then we just simply ask. We ask and say, God, we don't know how to do this, but you do. And we need revelation. We need to be able to see so that we can judge, discern between good and evil for who's able to judge this great people of yours, right? We need to be able to have the revelation of God in order to build. And you know, I want to know something super cool. It's this. Solomon was then granted not only an understanding heart, but when he asked for revelation from God in order to do what he called him to do, God gave him everything else practically that he needed in order to get the job done. Because a lot of you have dreams and visions of what you want to do for God. And those are dreams and visions that God has given you and called you to. And you're sitting there with a big question mark in your heart or or in your head and going, I don't have the capacity. I don't have the resource. I have no idea how I'm going to get there. Verse 10, it was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for yourself long life, nor have you asked for riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the life of your enemies, but you've asked for yourself discernment to understand justice or to know how to reign and rule, right? Behold, I have done according to your words. Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart so that there has been no one like you or before you, nor shall one like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there will not be any among the kings like you in your days. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And you know what happened? Seven years later, Solomon built the most majestic, most beautiful, most magnificent house for God. He built it. And you know what happened? As he built out of Revelation... And as he had all of this wealth, and if you read, if you continue to read 1 Kings 3, 4, 5, and you look at 2 Chronicles 1, 2, 3, all of those, or 4, 5, 6, 7, actually, all of those talk about Solomon's. I really encourage you to go read it. It's absolutely fascinating because he built his life on hearing God's voice and what God was saying, not on his own thoughts, not on his own opinions, not on the, again, the greatest principles in this life, but when he built it on that, what was the outcome? We don't have time to look at it right now, but the outcome was this. The glory of God, the glory cloud came and dwelt in the temple. To where it says, the scripture says, that not even the priests were able to stand and minister to God anymore because his presence and his glory was such in their midst. And then Solomon gets up and he prays and dedicates the house to the Lord. And not only then was the glory already there, but then fire fell from heaven in sight of everyone's eyes and consumed every sacrifice that was on the altar. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that God still moves like that this day? Do you believe that he wants to manifest his glory and his power in this hour I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it kind of did. But do you believe that he wants to do that in such a time as this when the world is in chaos, when people don't know how to discern what's good or evil anymore, right? When, when, When people are starting to wonder what's true and what's not, and when we are are kind of get when we ourselves get sick and tired of just doing church, and we say, God, no matter the cost. We want to be where you are. We want to be in alignment with you. And we want to reign on earth just like in what you're doing in heaven. And so we're always going to be where you are at just the right time because now we have and are walking in step with your revelatory spirit to do the things that you've called us to do. You see, Solomon didn't build this because he, was, uh, he, he, he knew all the right answers. 
He got this because God imputed to him something that he did not know before. That's revelation. And, and many of you in this room would know the story, but I'm going to say it real briefly. If you look at 1 Kings uh, chapter 3 and, and on, verse 16 and following, what you'll see is Solomon manifests that wisdom. There was two ladies that came in, and you know one of them was saying, one, they both uh, birthed babies at the same time, and they were both staying in the same room. One of them had passed, one of them died, but they came before Solomon, and one of the women was like, hey, uh, this woman, you know, she, she slept on her, on her baby and it died, uh, and then in the middle of the night, she took that baby, put it under me, and took my baby and took it. So when I woke up, I had a dead baby, but I was looking at it, and I thought, that's not my baby, that's my baby, and they were arguing and complaining about whose baby's his. And Solomon just said, bring me a sword. He goes, cut the live baby in half, and he goes, and then they can go do what they want to do. And again, the rest of the story is the, 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 the mother of the living baby said, no, 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 no. Keep the baby alive. Let her have it. And then in that moment, Solomon was able to speak and, and release justice and, and fix a problem because he had revelation that he'd never had before from the Lord. And then the Lord gave him what he needed to build a house where God's glory came and filled and actually transformed an entire nation. I don't have time to go into all of it right now. So that's that part. Second part is this. It won't be super long, but it's this. The other way that we build, okay, on revelation is with the gifts that God has given us. They're the, his revelatory gifts. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Again, we've said that revelation is actually, um, I can't remember, it sounds really good when I read the definition and I forgot to write it down again, but it's basically, it's exposing something that wasn't formerly known or something that was hidden. Okay, so when it's revealed, then we know it. Okay, but that revelation, this revelation that we're talking about is, is from the mind and heart of God. Okay, that's what we're talking about. And again, I believe that now more than ever, we're living in an hour where we need to be so in tune with what God is saying because he's wanting to give us, he's wanting to give us marching orders as we walk throughout our day, right? Because he wants you to be a part of building what he's doing in this hour. And if we're not willing and ready to listen, have that discerning heart to be able to hear his voice and walk with him, we're going to miss out on it. Okay? We're going to miss out on what he's building, or we might miss the transitional moments that he's taking us through, or we might miss what God is doing in this hour is, is, is bringing in an immense harvest. Right? I believe now more than ever the Lord is, 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 is going to bring in a harvest for his son. We've been praying in this, in this house for months now for family members, for prodigals, Guys, in the next 12 months, we're, we're going to see it happen. I just I make that declaration right now. We're going to see it happen. We're going to see families restored. We're going to see connections in our town that we've never had before, where favor is going to be released. There's, and there's bigger and broader things that God is building to, that's going to bring holistic healing to people on a, in a much wider scale. And there's more of these kind of communities that the Lord's wanting to plant and establish down the rim of the coast, even all the way down to Newry and other parts of, 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 of um, County Down. And you guys are a part of it. Okay. Again, a couple weeks ago we said we all are a key player in this. And this is how. 1 Corinthians verse 12. So how do we do this? How do you do it? Not just again the church leaders or whatever. We have a role, but it's not the role. Okay? It's not the only role. This is an all activation, right? Now concerning spiritual gifts, Paul says, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray by mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. What's he basically saying there? It's revelation. No one can actually speak of Jesus and the things of Jesus without the Holy Spirit. Okay? The true things of the Lord. Now, verse 4, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of ministries, but the same Lord. There are varieties of effects but the same God who works all things in all persons. Verse seven, but to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit 
for the common good. Remember that. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as He wills. Now, a few, few notes there. I want to go back. Did you notice how many times we like read wisdom, knowledge, discernment, all these words? What did, what did Solomon ask for? An understanding or a discerning heart, right? I would like to propose what Solomon was asking for that he didn't even know he was asking for was the revelatory spirit of God to be put upon him. And we know that that's exactly what happened because when God moves and in the Old Testament, he would anoint his king. The anointing is the Holy Spirit. But at that time, it would only come upon one person or maybe two or three people at a time. It wasn't for all but because of what Jesus did, what we celebrated just a few moments ago through his death and resurrection on the cross, he ascended into heaven and he poured out his spirit, the discerning one, the revelatory one, the one that speaks to our hearts and tells us what God is saying, what Jesus is saying. He speaks to us and he aligns us with what God is doing in heaven so that we can do it here on earth. Do you see the connection here? Okay, it's important. It's important for us to understand. So that's why I say these are revelatory gifts because these are gifts of the Holy Spirit. So he gives to people wisdom. Again, not wisdom because you've read a lot of books and you have a PhD. That's a good form of wisdom and knowledge, but that's not the wisdom we're talking about. This is something that you would not know, know unless it had been revealed to you by the reading of the word, by prayer, by, by understanding the nature of who God is, by a place of worship where the Lord downloads something into your very spirit and all of a sudden you begin to operate out of a power that's not your own. Okay? Uh, wisdom. To another, knowledge, certain pieces of information that God gives you, okay? All that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go through all these right now. That's what the sermon is about. But look at verse 6. These, uh, sorry, verse 7. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for what? The common good. Now, if you, if you flip your page, maybe you don't have to in your Bible, but 1 Corinthians 13, it's the infamous love chapter, right? Now, I want to preface this because this is really, really important. Revelation without love is nothing. Yes. Okay, let me say that one more time. Revelation without love is nothing. If you don't believe me, read verses ch chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Okay? Revelation without love is nothing. And we are building, and, and God is building a place where we have to, even as the body of Christ, even as the enemy is trying to divide the body of Christ in this hour, now more than ever, we need to be exercising love to a greater degree now more than ever. Okay? This is important, guys. I'm not going to go deep into that right now, but I want you to hear that. Now, I'm going to land the plane here. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. So he says, pursue love, yet desire earnestly. I'm going to, he says spiritual gifts, but, or revelatory gifts, revelation, but especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands. But in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. It's, okay, revelation. But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation and consolation. Okay. But the one who prophesies speaks to men for edification. Edification, the Greek word for edification, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm not a Greek expert, but here we go. Oikad omai. Okay, oikad omai. It literally means to build up. How do we build in this hour? Again, I know I'm just kind of hammering this in, but I think it's important for us to understand. We need revelation from God. The gift of prophecy is given, and Paul was even making an argument 
to use that above some other gifts because it actually builds the ecclesia of God up. Exhortation means to build up, to promote the growth of another Christian in wisdom, piety, happiness, and holiness. And if you've ever received a prophetic word from the Lord, from someone else, you would know because you walk away buzzing. You walk away going, that's the exact thing I needed to hear in order to know what I'm supposed to do next. Or that was exactly what I needed to hear because I think I was hearing God say this to me. And then all of a sudden this person came up and confirmed it. Or I was reading my Bible and I was, I've was i been thinking about all of these things in my family and I read a verse and it sprung to life. And the Lord gave me a, a, a spirit of prophecy in that moment. And that was the key that unlocked what needed to happen in my family. Is this making sense? It builds up. It promotes growth. Exhortation, it means uh, it actually has the same root word where we get the, the Greek word for the Holy Spirit, which is uh, the paraclete. It's paraclesis, is exhortation, which means to, to encourage or to console. And then it says consolation, and it's basically to con- calm or console or to comfort or to persuade. I'm sharing all that and saying all that because another way of reading verse 4 is this. The one who prophesies builds the ecclesia. So you might say, okay, Aaron, that all sounds great, but how do I get that? Because some of you in here, you, 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 you have the gift of prophecy, and you may not even know it. But we need you to exercise your revelatory gift in order so we can begin to see the body of Christ built in a way that we've never been built before. And some of you go, well, I want to do that. I want to be able to prophesy. I'm not sure I even understand it. Guess what? Solomon didn't know how to build a a, a temple for God, but he just humbly asked and desired in the place of humility to have a discerning heart, to have a prophetic heart so that he would hear from heaven, hear what God is saying so that he could then release it out here and then see the house of God being built around him. And the voice of God, the presence of God is accessible for not only unlocking and knowing how to build our lives, to to speak into our families, to speak into this community, and to speak into the community at large. And he wants to. You see, this is where our role comes in. So how do I do it? This is the end. We'll just do everything that we just read. What did Solomon do? He asked. In Luke, again, we've referenced this passage before, talking about a good father giving good gifts. And he said, no, nah, if, if, if your son is going to ask for, for uh, you know, a piece of bread, you're not going to give him a scorpion, would you? And so they said, and then Jesus said, so how much would a earthly father not do that to his son? How much more if you ask our father in heaven to give you a discerning heart, to give you the Holy Spirit himself, how much more will he give that to you? Just ask. Come to the place of honoring what God has done. Humble yourself and say, God, I need you. I don't know how to come in and out. I don't know how to break this thing in my own life. I don't know how to build into my family. I don't know what to do next. I don't know where to, 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 to move. I don't know what to, whatever. God, would you please reveal it to me? And would you let me hear from heaven? Then the scripture said, desire earnestly the spiritual gifts, especially prophecy, so that you can build the house of the Lord. And then finally this, we need, again, I mentioned it earlier, we just need to continue to love each other like we've never loved each other before. Because without the revelation of God and without love, then it, it's nothing. Okay? So we could have the most charismatic, tongue-speaking, angels showing up in our midst, uh, amazing miracles of God, a uh, cloud of God show up right here. I want all that. But without love, it's nothing. Without a humble heart, without a discerning spirit, it's, I, I don't say it's nothing. You understand what I'm saying? It's a, that's a big deal. But guess what? Solomon didn't get it all right. He didn't keep himself aligned with where God was. So that was all great for the moment. But he needed something more. And that more was the, the future king of his father, Jesus, that was to come to position us in the right place, 
to constantly be cleansed, to constantly be washed, to constantly be reminded or realigned so that we can walk with a repentant lifestyle to say, God, I want to be exactly where you are. Reveal to me, give me a discerning heart and help me to love people around me really, really, really well so that, God, we would see your glory manifested in ways that you've yet to do it on this earth before because I believe that's God's desire. I don't know about you, but it's mine. Um, if you would stand. Uh, oops, sorry. Let's just pray. Father, um, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for your spirit. I thank you that we are now living in a time where we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, God, we are honored actually to be able to be living in a time where we don't have to go to a certain place to worship you. We don't have to go to a certain building to worship you. We, we, uh, we are your building. And no one can ever take that away from us. Even if people were to come and try to kill this temple or destroy this temple, all it will do is rise and be with you. God, that's, that brings me great joy. But Lord, I understand that, God, you have called us in this hour, that you are building something new, that you are bringing alignment to us in a beautiful, beautiful way. And God, I guess in all of this this morning, we just humbly say to you, we do want to be where you are. We want to be right in the center of your will. We want to be right on time. God, we want, to, we want to experience the manifestation of your revelatory gifts. God, to where people, ourselves included, God, walk in the wonder and awe of you to a greater degree than ever before. Just like in the book of Acts, it was, there was an increasing level of awe and wonder amongst the people. But it's because your people were in time with you. It's because your people were building what you were building. Again, not to the latest structures of the hour, but according to Holy Spirit, what you were doing. And so, God, I just want to say to you this morning that we just lay it down again. We lay down our lives again. We lay down our dreams and our visions. We, 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 we lay down, God, um, our families before you. We lay down, God, the, the broken parts of our own lives, our own temples, God, that are, that are broken, that need alignment. And we say, God, we don't know how to come in or come out. We really don't, God. But we've seen you move. Maybe for some of you in here, you've seen God move in other people. But you haven't really experienced it yourself. And Jesus would just say to you, just, just come. Be born again. Be born of water and be born of spirit. And just give your life to Jesus. And begin to follow him. Count the cost. Because it costs everything. Count the cost because it costs our whole life. But Jesus, it's with a great joy that we count the cost. It's with great joy, God, that we say, come and do what you want to do. Because Jesus, more than ever, our hearts are beginning to align with your compassionate heart that weeps over families, that weeps over uh, prodigal sons and daughters, that weeps over marriages, that weeps over entire regions and towns and villages and says they are sheep without a shepherd and say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Lord, I ask that you would even now, even in light of that scripture, God, that you would send us out as workers amongst the harvest field, burning with compassionate love for other people, but filled with revelatory knowledge, empowered by your spirit, God, to prophesy, to work miracles, to have wisdom and knowledge that is other that is heavenly. So that we walk in rhythm with you, Holy Spirit. So God, just as you started with Solomon and you began to build into him, and that from that place, God, you built into you literally you touched the nations with what you did in Solomon's day. And they came and rejoiced in you, God. That's our desire. Yeah. Our desire in all of this, God, is not for, not for us, but God, for you to be lifted up, for you to manifest your, yourself amongst us in a way where the nations of the world run 
to Jesus. So we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.